What's going on, everybody? Thanks for pressing play today. In today's episode of Nerd and Soldier, you're going to find me, Irvin, doing a solo episode and bringing you some nerd news of the month, because it's been just about a month since the last time we delivered one of these to you. So, y'all know the drill. Please head over to Apple Podcasts, drop that five-star, tell your friends, family, co-workers about it. Please, please, please help us grow this audience. Help us grow this podcast community that we have created. All right. Y'all know the drill. Before we get started, here's a quick clip for you to enjoy. The Rorschach voice and the Batman Dark Knight voice are pretty much identical. So when you do watch this movie, pay attention to that. It's that darkness voice. Swear to me. You know, I noticed it and I was like, huh. I was like, that is oddly familiar. And I was like, oh, duh. That's that's where that's from. It's from fucking Batman. I was like, oh, duh. It's a Zack Snyder movie. Illuminati confirmed. Illuminati Urban is Batman. confirmed. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me today on this episode of Nerd Nostalgia Podcast. It's your main host, your boy, Irvin, on the ones and twos, giving you a solo episode and bringing you some nerd news of the month. It's been a month since we did this. Well, roughly, it's been like 20-something days. So, just about four weeks, almost the full month. But let's dive right into it. We got a lot of ground to cover, and I want to get this over to you guys as quick as possible. Let's start off with something that is near and dear to my heart as a DC fanboy. Snyderverse, it released, and it did well. Uh, The fans love it. I believe there was 1.2 million tweets to restore the Snyderverse. DC, listen to me. You can have... Restore the Snyderverse, you can have the Ayersverse, you can have your fucking cake and eat it. You want to make these new movies? Do it. You absolutely fucking can. You want to make a black Superman? Fucking do it. You can. It's called the multiverse. You can fucking do it. I've said fuck so many times and I apologize everybody. That's my fuck quota for the fucking fucking podcast episode. Okay, that was the last one. Sorry. I apologize. That that was a lot of F-bombs. And I do apologize, but I'm just so excited about this. I think I see so many possibilities for it. I think that they have the ability to get Black Superman, Calvin Ellis, or Val Zod if they want to go the dumb route. I say Calvin Ellis personally, or both, do both. Freaking, see, I didn't do the F-bomb that time. Do both, guys. You have the ability to do both. You can have your Snyderverse still be creating those movies and at the same time create a Black Superman movie. And then kind of link them up together for a, for an infinite crisis type of scenario. But I digress. I'm a fanboy. But it was received really well. So that is positive momentum for DC. I just hope that they really do consider restoring the Snyderverse. I think there's a lot of more story to be told. And I would definitely want to see some of those characters come back. Especially Henry Cavill as Superman. Oh, before we get... Uh, off track, not off track. Before we get on track, onto the news, there's also talk and rumors of a Deathstroke series on HBO Max. That would be absolutely wonderful. That's another character that has a lot of lore and could be done really well, I feel like, on a TV show. A lot of karate, punching, kicking, shooting. That's, you know, low budgetish stuff you can do on a show. Moving forward, moving forward, let's keep this going. We have some delays and some premiere dates. So these premiere dates, I want to say I've touched on before, but I definitely want to go over them again, just because number one, they're around the corner. Number two, they're pretty significant. So we'll start off with Spider-Man No Way Home, which is going to be debuting on what I think may have changed. I remember seeing a Christmas time frame, so obviously the 24th, but I think they bumped it out to December 17th. So that's the first one. That's the one that I wanted to start off with. Next up is going to be the Clone Wars 2.0, a.k.a. The untold stories of the Clone Wars? I don't know. It's going to be the Bad Batch, and that's going to be coming out on an awesome date, May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. May the Force be with you. Very, very clever, Disney. Well done, Lucasfilm, whoever promoted it. Speaking of Disney, we have Loki. That's going to be set to come out June 11th. So, with the Falcon and the Winter Soldier ending in two weeks, that means that you're only going to have about a week or so Time gap between that and the Bad Batch. So hopefully that's enough time to get you through 
and over carried over into Loki show, the next live action Disney Plus show from the Marvel Universe. So far, they are crushing the game. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, if you haven't watched it, is absolutely amazing. A lot of great things that they're doing. These uh, symbolism, social undertones, like it's it's just absolutely done well with racism, police brutality, post-traumatic stress disorder, like all these are, are woven into the actual show, but they're not just blatantly in your face. They're very subtle. They're done very classy and tasteful. Um, just it's it's wonderful. Absolutely give it a go. Uh, it'll make you cry. It'll make you feel things. So check it out if you already haven't. But I imagine that if you're listening to the show, you probably already are. If you're not, again, give it a go. Speaking of dates, we have kind of a teaser date. The Witcher officially finished wrapping. They released a picture of Henry Cavill with clapperboard indicating that they finished wrapping. The Witcher Season 2 is supposed to come out in 2021, but that's all that they've told us so far. So one can imagine that it's going to be at the end, probably November time frame is what I would imagine, giving the editors, producers, all those folks time to go into the post and make it, you know, not two timelines and not tell you about it. Oh, wait, no, they already did that. If you haven't seen The Witcher, highly recommend the show. Very good. Really good. Not as good as The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but pretty good. It's two different shows, but... Know that if you watch that show and you haven't watched it, The Witcher, that is, it's two timelines that are going to kind of meet. There's a present timeline and a past timeline. So just kind of know that going in and then it makes the show a little bit more enjoyable. But regardless, exciting news that we have a kind of estimate of when that's going to come out because that's a great show. I absolutely love it. If you missed it, I did a Who Is Your Favorite White Wolf and I posted a picture of Jon Snow, The Witcher, and the Winter Soldier. All of those characters are known as the White Wolf. So go ahead and vote if you already haven't. People pretty much swayed one way. But uh, yeah. Anyways, you thirsty, thirsty bastards. Anywho, moving back on to the news. We have, you know, we just had all these discussions about all the premiere dates. Nah, sadly, we have some delays. So one of the big moves was Venom 2 release date was moved and delayed over to September due to the pandemic. So it moved from June 25th to September 17th, but it was then delayed again. Venom 2 and Mortal Kombat were delayed both a week from their each of their respective latest dates. So the new dates, I don't know if you know, but we had a recent podcast episode where we discussed all the movies coming out and all of the release dates. You should check it out on Spotify, Amazon, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and of course, on everywhere else that you listen to your podcast. <laughs> but yeah, they delayed these a, a week. Um, I'm pretty happy that the fact that it was only a week, so it could have been a lot worse, but the new date for Mortal Kombat, which I'm super excited for, is going to be April 23rd, coming out on HBO Max, slash done by WB. Highly recommend you get HBO Max. I know I always talk about it, but their stuff is awesome, dude. I really, really recommend you guys get in on it if you already haven't. And then Venom 2, aka Venom, Let There Be Carnage, produced by Sony and Marvel, is set to release on September 24th. So a week after that initial date that I had just discussed. Hopefully they don't get pushed back, but this stuff is also fluid. Keeping up with the dates this year and last year was ever so difficult because things were constantly changing, being pushed back two months, three months, four months, being pushed back two, three, four, five times, six times. I don't think any of them hit double digits, but damn, damn close. So it was difficult to keep up with it. But now things are becoming a little bit more steady, a little bit more stable. So a little bit easier to track that stuff for you guys. So I was just talking about HBO Max, but let's switch to the big heavy hitter. The news is concerning Netflix. This is kind of a big deal. Sony and Netflix reach a new deal. Netflix acquires Sony movie streaming rights starting in 2022. This includes the Spider-Man and Venom franchises. What this deal does is it's basically to give Netflix an 18-month exclusive window for all of these titles. Morbius is going to be the first major release from the studio that is expected to debut on Netflix in 2022. 
what it sounds like is they're kind of testing if the Sony verse is going to end up becoming or staying on Netflix. So depending on how popular it is, I think will constitute whether Netflix goes all in and helps out Sony, give them a platform to debut these movies on, which I find super interesting, right? Because Disney owns a lot of the characters or they share some of the stuff. So the fact that they're not going to be on Disney plus is super interesting, but Sony is holding out with their spider Man, and uh, I think they have uh, they have a lot of stuff that they can go off of. Speaking of fluidity and movies that are constantly changing, and the funny thing is, I was just talking to my brother-in-law because he is a big G.I. Joe guy, has a big G.I. Joe collection, and he's actually trying to offload some of that collection. Snake Eyes, G.I. Joe Origins, is actually moving up three whole months to the July 23rd, 2021. I'm hoping that this is a trend that all these movies are going to move from, you know, their later dates up a little bit, but I'm thinking that this is going to be a fluke, that this is going to be one of the only ones. They probably just saw an opportunity on that date, not a lot of big releases coming out, and decided to seize the opportunity. So it's moving from October 22nd to July 23rd. So, brother-in-law, quad, go ahead and, uh, and those plans that we were discussing, maybe it's time to bump them up a little bit. But back to the news. You guys aren't here for me to have conversations with my brother-in-law. You're here for the news. The nerd news. So let's give it to you, baby. Next on the list is kind of a big deal. This is not something that I saw happening. And I honestly thought that this person's career was past it. But DC News, we have all still beautiful, I might add, Lucy Liu officially cast... In Shazam! Fury of the Gods. So Lucy Luce is set to play a villain, Calypso, which is the sister of Helen Mirren's villainous character, Hespera. Super interesting. I did not see this casting happening as I thought, you know, Lucy Liu is kind of past her acting prime as far as these kind of movies are concerned. But, you know, that's that's what I know. I, I'm just a guy on a podcast and my opinion matters not except when it does and except to you guys. And thank you. But yeah, I'm excited for that. Lucy Liu is an absolute treasure. I love her in just about anything that she does. Not that she's, you know, this award-winning actress, but she's a great actress, you know, and I, I really do enjoy her in all those movies. The one that's standing out in my mind right now, which this is not what she should be known for, it's going to be Charlie's Angels, Whenever that came out, I mean, I had to have been in the 90s. I think I was just, you know, a young kid and starstruck that they had Cameron Diaz, Lucy Liu, and what's the other one's name? I forgot the other one's name. Her, the redhead, that they were all in the same movie. But anyways, we have a few casting updates. We have a confirmation that Dallas Liu is going to be part of the Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings movie, which I am super excited about. I am specking on this movie to be just absolutely amazing. It's going to be the Marvel, Disney, Bruce Lee type of story, that crouching tiger, hidden dragon type of story. Or at least that's what I'm hoping. I think they have a lot of room to go from the Netflix version of Iron Fist which wasn't terrible, but uh, wasn't great either. Oh, before I switch into just all the castings and stuff, I totally forgot to talk about this one. Overlooked it. Two movies by DC have been canceled, and so it's really interesting. I think this is just more clues that the Snyderverse is going to get restored, that the Airverse may happen, and that this multiverse is going to happen. New Gods and the Trench movies have been officially canceled. So Ava DuVernay's, Ver, Vernay's, I don't know how to pronounce it, I apologize, New Gods and James Wan's Aquaman spinoff The Trench have both been canceled by Warner Brothers. I read or heard spec that that is just more clues that the Snyderverse is going to happen, that they didn't want those storylines to convolute what could potentially happen for the future of the Snyderverse, a.k.a. the DCEU-verse. I don't know what they're going to end up calling it. Multiverse is fine. I think that's perfectly manageable, understandable for the uh, what I like to call muggles as far as people who are not as nerdy as I am. Continuing on, we have another casting. And sticking with the DC theme here real quick, we have James Kusadi Moyer is joining the class... <laughs> the class is joining the cast of Black 
Adam. Now, I don't have any details about what character he's going to play. Most of these, I just want to let you know that these characters are going to be joining. The characters that these actors are going to be joining. Switching over to Disney and Marvel, we have Farhan Akhtar has reportedly joined the cast of Disney Plus the Mar- Disney Plus Miss Marvel series. So, really interesting. I'm I'm curious to see what Miss Marvel does and if and who's going to set off the Young Avengers. That's what I want to know. They're teasing them. They've shown some characters in some of the shows. So I just want to know who and what is going to set off the Young Avengers. Are they going to do a major Avenger movie and then have a Young Avengers and then kind of have them team up or maybe fight each other like Justice League versus Teen Titans type of deal? I'm curious where they're going with that or if they're just setting the platform for the future for the next generation of superheroes, which I imagine that's what they're doing as Disney wants to make as much money as possible. And so the only way to do that is to get a fresh set of faces, some young actors, and start building their career in that world. Speaking of young actors, we have Bodhi Sabo, Sabo I'm, I'm butchering this one, Sabongui, Sabongui, he's joining the cast of Black Adam. So all these characters, um, I, all these people, all these actors, I don't know who they're playing, but they're joining the cast. Usually what happens is, as soon as they're announced that they're joining the cast, you find out about a month to six weeks later, maybe sooner sometimes, who their character is going to be, or people start speculating who they're going to be. So, speaking of more characters, people that are cast, Renee Eli- I can't talk today, guys. Renee Elise Goldsberry has joined the cast of She-Hulk. She looks like she could be a contender for She-Hulk herself, but I believe we already have that set in stone. She she would have made a good one, actually. Continuing on... Ooh, one quick pause before we continue on with a few more of these castings. Invincible, if you haven't seen it, highly recommend it. So good. It's on Amazon. Perhaps wait until after the... Falcon and Winter Soldier has ended and then start that show. That way it gives you a little bit of buffer between that and the next uh, the next show, the next Loki show. All right, continuing. Oh, and Jupiter's Legacy is also another show that's going to be popping up that looks pretty good. Um, it definitely caught my eye. Some people have been saying, eh, I don't know about it, but whatever. All right, something else. We have some Moon Knight news. So there's a video out there and you can go to YouTube. You could go to Google, type in, Oscar Isaac training, and it looks like he's doing some martial arts and training for his Moon Knight role. So it looks pretty sick. Um, some of the stuff he's doing is just straight up hand to hand combat, and so I'm excited to see what that's gonna what that's gonna be, what that's gonna look like. You know that character has been compared to the Marvel version of Batman. There's similarities, but there's a lot of differences too. But I digress. Continuing on with another casting, we have Samina Ahmed has reportedly joined the cast of Disney Plus in the Miss Marvel series, along with Ali Khan reportedly also joining the Disney Plus show Miss Marvel. So a couple of Miss Marvel shows there, or Miss Marvel castings for the show right there for you. And finally, we have what I'm going to cap the show off with. I think this was probably the biggest news, and we've had a discussion about this. Fandom, one of our co-hosts, is one of the biggest fans for this. He actually has a full-on nerd talk, kind of like a TED talk, but a nerd talk. Ooh, maybe that's a good segment for the future. Keep your ears open. He has his full-on nerd TED talk, TED nerd talk. We're going to work on that. We're going to brainstorm that. But it's Gundam, the first ever live-action film for Gundam coming to Netflix, ladies and gentlemen. Holy bejesus. Jordan Vocht Roberts from Kong Skull Island has been set to direct and produce Legendary's first ever live action feature film version of Sunrise's Gundam on the number one streaming platform currently, Netflix. That's huge news. That's a big deal for Netflix. Gundam has a huge following. Netflix does a really good job about having anime on there. Hashtag Demon Slayer. Check it out if you already haven't. 
it is dubbed, so if you're a dubbed type of person and you want to listen in English, it's there for you. It's also subbed, if that's what you prefer. Currently, I'm actually watching Attack on Titan. Great season. Started off super slow. I was like, what are they doing? Where are they going with this? And now it all makes sense. Um, and just wow. So far, wow. But on that note, I want to get back to that show. So I'm going to cap off and wish you a wonderful and beautiful night, day, whatever time it is for you. I hope you enjoyed the episode. We'll catch you on the next one. Please head over to Apple Podcasts, drop that five star, tell your friends, family, and coworkers about it. Have them drop a five star, steal their phone, take it, have them sub to us, drop the five star on their phone. Go to your mom's, do the same thing, repeat the process, help us grow. I think we're up to like 170, 180 reviews. Thank you so much. We love it. We love bringing this content to you guys. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of Trey's heart, and from the bottom of Brian's heart. All right. Have a wonderful day. And remember, stay nerdy, my friends.